the Zcoin project was actually started, uh, it was called Moneta, and, but Moneta was never actually launched. And, uh, but with the so-called you know, uh, eminent launch of Zcash, uh, then Gary decided, well, you know, since we are using zero coin technology, we should call ourselves Zcoin. And um, I think that has resulted in a lot of bad blood because Zcash people think themselves like, you know, ripping off their name when actually, you know, with completely different technologies. And I do think that we are complementary in that regard. Uh, but there are really some key differences between Zcoin and Zcash. Uh, basically, Zcoin uh, uses the earlier zero coin protocol while Zcash uses the zero cash protocol. Now, the zero coin protocol and the zero cash protocol are written by the same authors and <coughs> like Ian Mayers, Matthew Green, all these are very established people. And um, all these people have uh, moved to the Zcash project and they kind of stopped developing the zero coin project. Now, and they abandoned, well, of course a lot of people ask us, well, why are we using this obsolete piece of technology then when, you know, all these people have moved on to zero cash? Well, well, first of all, you know, zero cash uh, was, was meant to address certain concerns. Basically, uh, Zcoin was kind of, um, it had a large proof size, it had a, like a 25 kilobytes per proof. <coughs> wow, uh, you know, compared to, let's say, a Bitcoin transaction which takes 288 bytes and uh, they felt that you know zero coin because of the proof sizes was just like a major stumbling block and also because zero coin you have to mint it in fixed in denominations like one coin 25 coins 50 coins 100 coins you know that those sort of fixed denominations while zero cash completely removes that you can do without all the denominations it's just every there's no more fixed denominations there's small proof sizes but and it sounds really good <coughs> but there are actually trade-offs one which is the, the biggest one is the auditability auditability of your supply so you know in a zero knowledge proof sort of setup when you want to sort of turn a coin uh, the whole idea of how zero coin works is that you take a coin with all this transaction history behind it, you burn it up, and then at the later time you use a proof to show that you did burn a coin without showing which coin you burned, and you redeem the new coin. And this new coin has no transaction history whatsoever. So now, if you think about it, if there's a flaw in this type of system, you can generate because this so-called destroy and redeem. If there's a problem with the redemption process, coins can be minted out of thin air. And it has actually happened to Zcoin, Z, Z and we only detected it because of the auditor, auditable supply, because we know how many coins goes in, how many times goes out. With Zcash, you can't. And uh, that's the main problem, because let's say if there was, maybe you know, there's a problem with the, the trusted setup. Maybe there's a problem with the cryptography or there's a bug. All these coins can be generated and no one will know because you cannot audit the supply, which I think is a, is a very big concern. Um, another big thing is that although, you know, to achieve all these small proof sizes, uh, zero cash uses very uh, new, new cryptography in the past, like two or three years, I mean, which are, uh, it's called like ZK snuff. And, uh, you know, only a handful of people actually understand it. Like Zuko Wilcox, you know, one of the key people in Zcash, you know, admits that he doesn't completely understand what, what ZK Snarks does, right? And, you know, he's of course relying on cryptographers to advise him. And fair enough, we do think that actually what they're doing is, is pretty good, it's interesting. But it is also, you know, exploring very unknown territory that combined with an unauditable supply makes it to me kind of risky. While if you compare in zero coin in comparison, yes, you know, it may seem a bit more cumbersome, but we are using, you know, RSA encryption, RSA accumulators, which has existed for many, many years. And if RSA encryption is broken, 
you know, the least of your problems would be Zcoin. You would be looking at your bank transactions, your SSL certs, and all this other stuff, rather than looking at Zcoin. Well, if ZK stocks breaks, you know, the only thing that you'd be looking at is Zcash. Uh, I do think that's a very like important thing, you know, when you are looking at your pri financial privacy, you know, do you want to rely on better tested cryptography or do you, would you want to try some experimental thing to reduce uh, proof sizes? Of course, we, we do think that, you know, we should look at both and there's a, you know, room for both to, to explore. But that doesn't mean, uh, you know, uh, Zcoin has no place. And, you know, there's all this uh, sort of like, like one of the major criticisms of Zcoin is the high proof sizes. We've actually like, you know, um, you know, looked into research and there's actually been very promising developments to reduce these proof sizes to maybe about one kilobyte. And uh, combined with the fact that we may be able to remove trust. We're actually pretty confident that we can remove trusted setup. So what a trusted setup is, is like, you know, with Bitcoin, you don't have to trust some bunch of people to, to create some special secret parameters. With, uh, with Zcash, you know, they, they had like, I don't know how many people was it? Like five, five, four, five, five or six people sort of, uh, you know, generate some parameters and destroy those parameters. As long as, uh, you know, none of them colluded, or at least one of them, I think, I think, even if one, all of them have to collude to be able to have those parameters uh, to be uh, exposed. This is, of course, assuming that their setup is uh, correct. <clears throat> now, with the trusted setup, that means you are trusting these five people, and anyone who has those parameters can generate coins out of thin and because of the, the previous unauditable supply problem. You know, there is this, uh, this is huge risk because you cannot detect it. While with Zcoin, we actually use parameters from a factoring challenge, uh, a, I think some 20 years ago, which, was, which had like a 200,000 US dollar bounty and no one broke it. But of course we think that, well, even if we're using those parameters, it's still not ideal, you know, this, we're still trusting someone, even though, you know, so much years has passed. Maybe some guy secretly kept it, and uh, with our like new Sigma developments, which we we hope to implement in the next, uh, you know, one year or so, uh, this trusted setup will be removed. So uh, we are not aware of a, a similar type of um, solution for Zcash. So we do think that you know, zero coin has a real you know, real place in the sort of uh, you know, Zcash versus Zcoin sort of thing.